And I think another potential confounding variable is stress, certainly in kind of our modern uh, pace of life versus maybe what we would have experienced, you know, hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Can you talk a little bit about the stress and testosterone connection and how it's important for men to you know, manage their stress for testosterone or a little bit on how testosterone might actually serve as a protective buffer if you do have you know, a very busy sort of modern day lifestyle? There's some interesting sociological, anthropological views around testosterone and um, stress. And what, what is true is that stress um, can lower testosterone. So, you know, if we see a 25-year-old guy in the office and his testosterone is low and he's going through something in his life, whatever it is, some life situation, uh, he's not sleeping well, um, he's not eating well, um, we might treat him with testosterone, I might, but I think of him as somebody who, if he gets out of that situation, uh, and has less stress in his life, let's say six months later, that he may not need it. We never measure testosterone levels in people who are hospitalized because we know their levels are going to be incredibly low. It's part of a stress response. It's not even worth knowing what that number is. It's so skewed uh, in a negative way. On the other hand, if we see a guy who's 55, 60 years old, whose testosterone is low, even if he's stressed, and a lot of us are, are stressed in the world these days, it's unlikely to ever improve substantially. So that guy we're probably talking about, you're going to have low levels of testosterone probably for the rest of your life. We know levels decline as men get older. Um, but So stress can be important, and it's related also to sleep. You know, People ask, what can I do to improve my own testosterone naturally? So stress is one, if you can do something to reduce your stress, not easy in this life, but it's possible. Um, if there's an episodic event, whatever it is, family, work, etc., uh, sometimes that can improve. But sleep is something that we can control to a certain extent. And uh, people who uh, are getting any kind of impaired sleep drops testosterone. So there, there's um, sleep hygiene, we call it. Right. You know, sort of going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time every day, including weekends, um, that can help. Um, if there's something keeping you up at night, you know, you try and deal with it. People talk about screen time on their devices. Right. <laughs> can actually make it harder for you to go to bed. Um, so there are a number of things like that. But improving sleep uh, can probably improve testosterone. Certainly having bad sleep drops it. So that... Sleep connection, you kind of mentioned circadian hygiene or essentially the idea of a diurnal rhythm and the importance of that. Can you give people who are maybe less familiar with the mechanism by which sleep is supportive of testosterone, just give them a quick rundown on the connection between sleep and testosterone. And then also when we see men who are uh, testosterone deficient, is it possible that normalizing their levels with the therapy could potentially help? with their sleep and overall circadian rhythm. You know, it's, it's interesting because people who go on testosterone therapy often say that their sleep is better. And I don't think we really understand what that mechanism is, uh, except that my own view is that it's it, the healthy situation for our bodies is having a normal level of testosterone. <laughs> right. uh, that's how, I, uh, it, that's overly simplistic. It doesn't tell us the mechanism, but I think that's, that's the way it works to me. You know, so testosterone has what we call a diurnal variation, which means that it, at different times of the day, it could be high or low. And it's highest usually in the early morning, and then it decreases um, over the course of the day, um, and uh, then starts to rise again in the middle of our sleep. That's true mainly uh, for younger men who are healthy and not on medications and who don't have low testosterone. We published a study a few years ago that it turns out that men who have, younger men who have low levels of testosterone don't have that diurnal variation. Hmm. So we measured their, they, you know, they sort of slept in the, in the study center. We measured blood every few, every few hours. And for the men who started low, it never changed really. So that's interesting. Whether diurnal variation is important um, is an interesting question, at which at this point it's entirely speculative. Um, and I don't really know the answer. You know, it's so, the answer is so overwhelmed by the benefits of testosterone therapy if a man is low that 
It's hard to know how it might change if, it, if we shifted it so it was higher here and lower there. 